welcome you all back on history adulan today let us study the second part of emergence of nationalism in india what we learn in the first part let us quickly recap we learn about the formation of indian national congress the rise of moderates and extremist era we learn about the different revolutionary activities and the revolutionaries like vasudev balwant padke chafekar brothers vinayak damodar savarkar their uh, work work in uh, indian revolution and also same time we learn about lokamanya tilak and his contribution towards the emergence of nationalism after the death of lokamanya tilak on 1st august 1920 the leadership national leadership of india went into the hands of mahatma gandhi and thus the gandhian era began in india this gandhian era is described from 1920 to 1947 till the attainment of independence this period is called as gandhian era the revolutionary movements from 1885 to 1920 this period created a suitable environment and the background for nationalism in india indians became hostile towards the policies of british government british government adopters adopted several repressive policies in india which hurt the sentiments of indians condition of muslims in the international politics was also not well when gandhi returned from south africa to india in the year 1915 he toured the whole india he studied the condition in india and then he decided to support champaran movement in bihar this was the movement of the peasants against the planters he also extended his support to the khed and ahmedabad uh, movements in gujarat gandhi ji who believed in the principles of truth and non violence truth satyagraha and non violence ahinsa a fight in a peaceful way against the british so this was what the novel weapon of satyagraha used by gandhi ji to fight against british raj in india gandhi ji approached the masses of india through his speeches and personal contact he insisted the indians that be the change you want to see because if you want to make india free the change you want to see, you must see that change for so that we can get the independence or the liberty now let's see the khilafat question so what is this khilafat question khalifa who was the religious head of islam all over the world his main seat is in turkey and after the first world war turkey signed a treaty of severs this was repressive treaty that was signed by turkey and that disintegrate that led to disintegration in the islam so khilafat committee was formed and that started protesting against the european powers and the khilafat committee that was founded in india there were four founders of this uh, khilafat committee maulana muhammad ali shaukat muhammad ali uh, hasrat mohani hazrat uh, ajmal khan and all these formed this khilafat committee on 1st august 1920 gandhi ji wanted all indian muslim support for the india's freedom struggle and since he supported khilafat movement that is a fight of the islam against the europeans and same time he urged muslims of india to unite to fight against the british in india so thus the khilafat movement started and this khilafat movement is also now known as non cooperation movement non cooperation movements mean not to cooperate with the british government british who were ruling in india for long period in india now if indians stop cooperating with the british then surely the british raj will end so that is what the best policy stop cooperating with the british government paralyze the british government and everything will be okay like so this is what uh, the philosophy ideology of gandhi he believed in the peaceful way to fight against british and that's why he launched khilafat movement and it was supported by non cooperation movement so what were its feature let's see quickly not to cooperate second boycott the government court schools and colleges the government schools colleges which were run by the british the, the people should stop going to those schools and colleges and they should form the national educational institution of their self 
Along with Swadeshi and boycott, Indians demanded for indigenous educational institutions, institutes. And for that matter, they, they boycott even provincial elections and they also asked for prohibition of liquor. What they boycotted? There were Motilal Nehru, C. Gopalachari, C. R. Das. They boycott the government courts where they were working. They boycott the government courts. Then uh, the Aligarh University, which uh, established uh, Milia Islamia uh, University in India, which was indigenous university. Subhash Chandra Bose, who was a scholar of Indian civil services, he gave up his job and joined as a principal of National College in Calcutta. Same time, the foreign goods were boycotted and they were put on bonfire. So this is the way Indians resented, showed their disagreement, strong disappointment against the British government. This non-cooperation movement was a nationwide movement. When a peaceful group of people agitating in Uttar Pradesh at a place called Chauri Chaura in Gorakhpur, there was a police station and people were passing in front of the police station and British police opened fire on the unarmed masses. Unarmed masses enraged, they became angry and in return they lost control and they uh, started fighting against the British police and they put British police station on fire. They burned 22 policemen and one officer alive in that fight. ये वही आंदोलन है जिसे राष्ट्रपिता महात्मा गांधी ने चोरी चोरा का अपराध करार दिया इतिहासकारों का यह भी कहना है कि महात्मा गांधी ने चोरी चोरा कांड के कारण ही असहयोग आंदोलन वापस ले लिया था चोरी चोरा कांड में शामिल सपूत ने ब्रिटिश हुकूमत को हिलाकर रख दिया था चोरी चोरा उत्तर प्रदेश के गोरखपुर जिले में एक गांव है जो ब्रिटिश शासनकाल में कपड़ों और अन्य वस्तुओं की बड़ी मंडी हुआ करता था अंग्रेजी शासन के समय गांधी जी ने असहयोग आंदोलन की शुरुआत की थी जिसका उद्देश्य अंग्रेजी शासन का विरोध करना था इस आंदोलन के दौरान देशवासी ब्रिटिश उपाधियों को सरकारी स्कूलों और अन्य वस्तु को त्याग कर रहे थे और वहां के स्थानीय बाजार में भी भयंकर विरोध हो रहा था इस विरोध प्रदर्शन के चलते दो फरवरी उन्नीस को पुलिस ने दो क्रांतिकारियों को गिरफ्तार कर लिया था गिरफ्तारी का विरोध करने के लिए करीब चार हजार ने थाने के सामने ब्रिटिश शासन के खिलाफ प्रदर्शन और नारेबाजी की इस प्रदर्शन को रोकने के लिए पुलिस ने हवाई फायरिंग की और जब प्रदर्शनकारी नहीं माने तो उन लोगों पर ओपन फायर किया गया इसी कारण तीन प्रदर्शनकारियों की मौत हो गई और कई लोग घायल हो गए इसी दौरान पुलिसकर्मियों की गोलियां खत्म हो गई और प्रदर्शनकारी को उग्र होता देख वह थाने में ही छिप गए अपने साथी क्रांतिकारियों की मौत से आक्रोशित क्रांतिकारियों ने थाना घेर उसमें आग लगा दी इस घटना में कुल तेईस पुलिसकर्मियों की जलकर मौत हो गई थी जिसमें तत्कालीन दरोगा गुप्तेश्वर सिंह भी शामिल थे यह घटना जब गांधी जी को पता चली तो उन्होंने अपना असहयोग आंदोलन वापस ले लिया दस वेन द न्यूज ऑज नोन टू गांधी गांधी फेल्ट दैट दिस मूवमेंट हैज बिकम अ वायलेंट एंड दिस डू नॉट फुलफिल हिज प्रिंसिपल आइडियाज ऑफ नॉन वायलेंस एंड सत्याग्रह सो ही डिसाइडेड टू विदड्रॉ दिस मूवमेंट बैक इन फेब्रुवरी नाइनटीन Within Indian National Congress, there was one group who believed that Britishers should be opposed within. And how that is possible? That is possible by participating in the provincial legislative elections. And that's why there were some Indian nationalists who established a political party called Swaraj Party in the year 1923. There were some leaders like uh, C. R. Das, Motilal Nehru. Uh, Madan Mohan Malviya, N.C. Kelkar and others who were the prominent leaders who took lead in forming Swaraj party. In the year 1927, there was one commission sent by British in India to study the nationalistic policy of India. That is to review the nationalistic development policy in India and that was called the Simon Commission. This commission did not had a single Indian member, but all its member were the Britishers. That's why Indians did not like this commission and they opposed. Indians expressed their anger against the British government because of the two factors. One is the Simon Commission and second is the economic depression of 1929. And according to this economic depression, there was a decline of agricultural prices and there was a no export and it, it had also declined. 
so this simon commission and the economic depression this both the factors force indian to fight with a more vigor against the british indians under the leadership of lala ji lajpat rai conducted a mass procession in lahore where the simon the members of simon commission were supposed to land from the railway they greeted simon commission with the black flags and the slogan simon go back a position of indians was not at all liked by the britishers and they open lathi charge at the procession and in which lala ji lajpat rai was brutally killed by the british bhagat singh and other leaders who were present at that time they felt lala ji was purposefully made a target and he was killed thus bhagat singh vowed to take a avenge of lala ji's death and later on he killed john saunders whom he mistaken the officer who was responsible for the death of lala ji gandhi ji said lala ji lajpat rai was a symbol of power because his famous statement says as long as the sun shines in the indian sky the person like lala ji will not die bhagat singh who was the member of hindustan socialist republican association along with chandrashekhar azad later on he also formed another organization called naujawan bharat sabha he also threw a bomb in the legislative assembly to make the deaf british hear his intention was not to hurt or not to kill anyone in the court but intention was clear british have become deaf and they need to hear that's why the bomb was blasted the bomb was put in the legislative assembly young revolutionaries along with the bhagat singh chandrashekhar azad there were more young revolutionaries who believed in the non violent method non violent way of fighting against britishers because how long you are going to uh, plead in front of the british government for the independence so now it is enough to plead instead of pleading now let us fight non violently so this was what the motive of the revolutionaries and bhagat singh rajguru sukhadev azad surya sen prafulla chaki Ram Prasad Bismilla Ashafullah Khan Khudiram Bose this were some of the young revolutionaries contributed a lot towards emergence of nationalism along with the brave women there were many women who also joined the indian national struggle like kalpana datta pritilata wadedar who joined along with the surya sen in the chittagon armory raid besides there was a bina das suniti choudhary shanti ghosh madam bhikaji kama the role of madam bhikaji kama cannot be forgotten because she is a woman she is a revolutionary woman who unfurl indian flag at stadgrad in germany now the moderates and extremists both came together and they started working for india's independence with hand in hand thus there was a new demand came on national level that is all about purn swaraj or complete independence there was a session in lahore lahore present day it is in pakistan when india was a one country that time lahore falls in india so there was a session of inc at lahore in the year 1929 this lahore session is important because of several reason one because of the mantle of leadership of inc had changed from motilal nehru to his son jawaharlal nehru that is the one reason second this session is important because it demanded it passed the resolution of purn swaraj complete independence and they declared 26 january 1930 as the independence day this is to prepare people to fight against the british rule thirdly they also launched civil disobedience movement this is the civil disobedience movement is a little different to from that of the non cooperation movement non cooperation movement failed uh, to reinstall lation of the khalifa and also attainment of swaraj but the mass awakening which was made during this time was really a great achievement and this created a spark for the independence now what is this civil disobedience movement let us go through civil disobedient movement was the another movement national level movement nationwide movement that was launched by gandhi ji on 12th march 1930 so what is the background behind this let us see it first so the main motive of this civil disobedience movement was to paralyze the british administration and to fight against british unjust law so this is what the main aim they Gandhi ji put for number of demands in front of british one abolish the salt tax that is imposed on india prohibition of liquor in india and also end the monopoly of salt 
production in India. So, these were the demands, but uh, government rejected all the proposals and that is why on 12th March 1930, Gandhiji started a salt satyagraha, which is also famous as a fight against salt act. The salt which was freely available in India was just imposed tax on that. That is why he arranged a march towards Dandi. Dandi is a place in seashore of the Gujarat and he walked 385 kilometers from Sabarmati Ashram Gujarat till the Dandi on the sea belt. On the way, he conducted several meetings with the masses of India. Through his speeches, he created an awakening amongst the Indian masses and asked Indians to join the movement. Thus, along with the men, many women participated in this Dandi march. On 5th April 1930, they reached at Dandi and Gandhiji uh, lifted a fistful of salt and broken the salt law. This was an electrifying news that spread all over India and Indians were so enthusiastic now to free India and throw British rule out of the country. Thus, the salt satyagraha reached to the other parts of Indian seashores like in uh, Gujarat, Odisha, Maharashtra, Madras and other sea seashore belt, the Indian masses opposed the salt act. Even in the interior part of India, the forest law was opposed by the peasants and other. Women such as Sarojani Naidu, Kamla Nehru, Kamla Devi Chattopadhyay, Sucheta Kruplani and others were the prominent women who participated in the salt satyagraha. This movement was not liked by the British government and since they started arresting Indians. Same time they confiscated the illegal salt, even uh, gave order for lati charge and firing. In this number of hundreds of people were killed, wounded. Gandhiji was arrested in the year 1930 and second time in the year 1932. He was arrested twice. Uh, he was after immediately after the civil disobedience movement, uh, when it became a violent one, lot many Indians were killed and they were wounded. So because of to avoid this chaos that had happened, uh, Gandhiji suspended the movement and later on he was invited to participate in the talk of a round table conference in London. He avoided first round table conference but uh, uh, joined the second round table conference in London but uh, it did not fulfill his uh, demand. So that is why after coming back from London he decided to continue uh, the civil disobedience. The years 1928 to 1934 had brought about great change in the Congress movement by giving it greater unity, self-confidence, pride and determination. The Congress had made the freedom struggle a movement of the masses. The result of the civil disobedience movement and the round table conference was the passing of Government of India Act 1935, which had laid the foundation of democracy by recognizing the principle of election. The Quit India Movement In order to get India's support, for the Second World War, the British Prime Minister sent Sir Stafford Cripps to India in March 1942 to carry out negotiations with the Indian leaders. The Cripps mission plan suggested dominion status, formation of constituent assembly after the war, freedom for provinces and princely states to join or not to join the federation. The Congress rejected the proposal because the freedom given to the provinces as well as the princely states would sow the seeds of future partition of India. At the same time, the power would come to the Indians only after the war. Gandhiji described this as a post-dated check on a sinking bank. It was opposed by the Muslim League also as there was no provision for formation of Pakistan. After the failure of Cripps mission, the Congress Working Committee on 14 July 1942 passed a resolution demanding the withdrawal of British power from India. On 8 August 1942, the Quit India resolution was passed. Gandhiji gave the masses the slogan of do or die. He also urged the people to prepare themselves for sacrifices to achieve India's independence. In the early morning of 9th August 1942, 
the british administration arrested gandhi ji jawaharlal nehru maulana azad and other congress leaders of congress working committee as many leaders were arrested the people assumed the leadership and continued the movement they resorted to hartals and demonstrations students boycotted schools and colleges and workers went on strike people attacked the government properties at many places the government treasuries were looted at the certain places like satara and mednapur parallel governments were set up to challenge the british authority thus uprising spread even to the villages more than 90000 people were arrested the british government used cruel measures to suppress the indians demonstrators were fired upon the imprisoned demonstrators were subjected to severe harassment a ban was imposed on the press hundreds of people were killed and many were injured in the police firing some congress leaders gave a slip to administration went underground and continued the movement jay prakash narayan led the underground movement other leaders included achyut rao patwardhan dr ram manohar lohia aruna asaf ali usha mehta and others aruna asaf ali operated the underground movement during the quit india and gave updates on the secret radio network which was started by the group of underground revolutionaries they resorted to secretly operating the radio stations destroying transport and communication system and other such activities netaji subhash chandra bose was one of the important leader of indian national congress due to his differences with the congress leaders he quit and formed the forward block in 1939 he inspired the people with the slogan of chalo delhi and tum mujhe khun do main tumhe azadi dunga give me blood and i will give you freedom he led the indian national army or azad hind fauj to carry on the fight with britishers the indian national army had inspired the indian people and indian soldiers in the british army to fight for their independence by 1945 the british had realized that india's demand for independence can no longer be neglected thus in 1946 British Prime Minister Clement Attlee sent the cabinet mission to India. This mission submitted plan according to which it had suggested the formation of an All India Federation and Indian representatives to prepare a constitution. But this plan was not acceptable to Muslim League because it did not accept their demand of separate Pakistan. It was decided to observe 16th august 1946 as a direct action day amidst the violence which erupted lord wavell announced the formation of interim government on 2nd september 1946 with congress members alone and with jawaharlal nehru as its head it was in march 1946 that lord mountbatten was appointed as a last viceroy and responsibility of transferring the political power was given to him on 3rd june 1946 the mountbatten plan was announced by him this plan was suggested independence to a divided india India will be divided into India and Pakistan freedom to Indian princely states to join either one of them or to remain independent Indian National Congress unwillingly accepted the partition as it had always wanted freedom for a united country the British parliament passed the Indian Independence Act on 18 July 1947 granting independence to divided India On 15th August 1947 India achieved independence Jawaharlal Nehru became the first prime minister of independent India and the union jack was replaced with chakradhwaj tricolor flag India became a republic on 26 January 1950 when the Indian constitution came into force and Dr Rajendra Prasad became the first president Thank mm-hmm. you.